The PM, yes him, is under renewed pressure after Lee Anderson uh, defected to reform yesterday. Well, the Ashfield MP, who has been suspended for Islamophobic remarks from the Tory party, became reform's first sitting MP. It is his third party in six years. He was suspended as a Labour councillor in 2018. Speaking yesterday, he explained his decision. Like millions of people in this country, I feel that we are slowly giving our country away. We are allowing people into our country that will never integrate and adopt our British values. Parliament doesn't seem to understand what many British people want. It is no secret that I've been talking to my friends in Reform for a while, and Reform UK has offered me the chance to speak out in Parliament on behalf of millions of people up and down the country who feel that they're not being listened to. And like millions of people up and down the country, all I want is my country back. Well, we're joined now by Talk TV's chief political nerd, sorry, commentator and political nerd, sorry, commentator, Matthew Stadlin. Gentlemen, good morning. In the blue tie, Matty, this morning. Not just any blue tie, a, a real Tory royal blue tie. Just right. to confuse you. Yes. <laughs> uh, Pete, let's start with you. Um, uh, uh, Lee Anderson, you see three constituents there saying he speaks for us, he speaks for people, right? Suspended from the Tory party um, uh, for Islamophobic remarks. They found that unacceptable. He said it was free speech. Whatever your opinion on that, fine. There is, though, if you look at this, not dissing reform or sticking up for Sunak or criticising Starmer. Three parties in six years. Ideologically, you would expect to be criticised just a tad, wouldn't you? Yes, 30p Lee has become three-party Lee. We wrote that. Why are you nicking our line, then? Said, I actually wrote it yesterday and they stole it from me. So, anyway, um, there's... Uh, Is that true? <laughs> yeah. So, there's... Actually, actually no, there's a producer called Harry who wrote it. Anyway, and I stole it from him. His fee will be 0p. Anyway, um, the point is that Lee Anderson has moved from the Conservatives to reform. He was previously in Labour. In fact, he <coughs> campaigned for Michael Foote in 1983. So My he's been God. on quite a political journey. Although people, uh, some people contacted me yesterday were saying, well, actually, he hasn't changed his views. It's the Conservative Party, which is less Conservative and is more Liberal. So actually, he sort of stayed the same. But interestingly, was he even really a Conservative to start with? He was a 2019 Red Waller MP. He made a huge impression, connected with a lot of people, offended a lot of people as well with his remarks over City Can. But the fact is, he is now Reform UK's first MP. That is a very, very important uh, thing for them. It's a breakthrough for them. He has said uh, Lee Anderson has previously committed to having a by-election if people uh, change parties. He, he uh, voted for a piece of, a piece of uh, a motion in regard to that from a Conservative MP called Anthony Mangle. But he's not going to stand in a by-election. He says, like, a, a general election could be called at any minute. Rishi Sunak, if he wants to do that on the 4th of May, when there are lots of other uh, elections, Mayor of Manchester, Mayor of London, local elections in England, to be called, he needs to make that decision in the next 10 days or so. But it looks unlikely that'll happen. Matthew, worth noting here that he has never defected to a different party whilst being a welcome member of mm. the party that he was in. Both times he's been suspended and hasn't necessarily had a choice. <coughs> For me, this actually isn't a Lee Anderson story. It's a Rishi Sunak Quite story. Quite agree with you, right? my friend. This is a man that Rishi Sunak, the Prime Minister, appointed as the deputy chairman of the ruling party. So what does that say about our Prime Minister's judgment? Well, do you know what's really interesting? And I'm so glad you said that. And I don't know what you think about this, Pete and Nick, but I keep saying this every single day. When he walked slowly up Downing Street to that lectern, after all the chaos and all the frivolity, he was really, you know, we're going to do this, we're going to do it differently. He employed Gavin Williams that day, an absolute joke who was gone within 46 days. This is an appalling example of Richie Sunak's judgment. If, if, if Lee Anderson... It's like the Suella Bravman thing. To get the job he did a pact with Suella Bravman, <laughs> to appeal to the Red Excuse Wall... the record, Jeremy. Come on, but it's true. To appeal to the Red Wall, Richie Sunak in Islington, think, Islington, whatever, thinks I'll employ Lee... Did he have any... Absolutely Lee Anderson party. was always going to be a problem to Richie yes, Sunak, he was. right? He has a right to speak out, but this... Matt's right, this is appalling judgment by the PM again. Every party is a coalition. Get, keeping people together, especially in the Conservative Party, at the minute is like herding cats. The idea with Lee Anderson being uh, deputy chairman of the Conservative Party was to say to that part of the Conservative Party, to say to a number of Red Wall MPs, not all Red Wall MPs, but a number of Red Wall MPs on the right of the party, actually, you're being listened to. And Lee Anderson, they tried to get him back. Bad judgment, they, they yes to, or no? Bad I, judgment. I think it, it, it's the... I think he's boxed in. I don't think he had much of a, 
a choice, really, mm. to try to hold the Conservative Party together. There are uh, questions at the moment. Alicia Fitzgerald, my colleague, was being told yesterday that more MPs may defect to Reform UK this week. We're also told that if 10 MPs defect to Reform UK, I don't think it's going to happen, but if they do, Rishi Sunak will be forced to call a general election. Why there, would that... What, what, I'm interested in this. Why well, would because... That, how could he hold that against them? Because support would be, dr would be draining and away and people would say, you know, that you know this, the time had come for a general election. Listen, I think Rishi Sunak is under a huge amount of pressure, not just because of Lee Anderson, but because of lots of other factors. And the fact is that he wants to hold a general election in November, but he may not have an option. It may have to be before that. Can I just very quickly jump in here on Lee Anderson? I mean, he and I have had a few ding-dongs in person before, though we get on all right, because I can see the good in him, I can see the good in most people. Not People aren't all bad. I'm not all good, not all bad. He made Islamophobic comments about Sadiq Khan, for which he has refused to apologise. I interviewed Richard Tice, leader of reform, even if Nigel Farage is a sort of spiritual leader, for my podcast, 20 Questions With, and I said to Richard Tice, can you be emphatic that there is no place for Islamophobia? Can you utterly reject it? He said, I utterly, totally reject it. And now he has welcomed into the bosom of his party as his only MP a man who has refused to apologise or acknowledge that he made Islamophobic comments. There's something else as well for me. I don't know what Nick thinks. I, 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 I get... You say change the record. We have a Prime Minister who wasn't elected by the British people. Why the hell should Lee Anderson sit in the Commons representing his constituency unless a majority of that constituency want him as their MP? It I makes a do. joke of our... Dem dem but he was he was democratically elected. But n he wasn't but under, under the banner of reform. reform. Not, I understand. And that's where I think yeah, it's wrong. under the banner of reform. Uh, just talking generally now about what Lee Anderson seems to stand for. He repeatedly said yesterday, I want my country back. He's not the only person saying this, but what does he? What is he referring to specifically? Well, you'd Who does he want his country back from? You'd have to ask ask Lee Anderson that question. But to me, it is dog whistle stuff. Yeah. What is he? What is it? What was so great about 1970s or 1980s England or Britain that Lee Anderson wants back? I, I'm going to be careful what I say next. I might leave it to you, Peter, to explain <laughs> that. Well, it's interesting from Lee Anderson's perspective, and I think a lot of people will uh, find something in that statement. I think there are a lot of people who feel it's not a racial thing, it's not it's it's more a cultural thing. It's not even about other cultures necessarily, but it's about a British way of life that Lee Anderson would talk about. He would talk about the idea of England, the idea of the UK and what it, what it was previously and what it has now become. I think a lot of people feel that there is no control, there is no sense that uh, you know the police are out of control, the public institutions, when, you can't get a GP's appointment. Yeah. You know there, there are lots of ideas around that. Look, some people will take that as a kind of as, as, as Matthew says, a sort of dog whistle thing. But he, he was, he thrown was thrown out, out the party for his number five, when... so people will not, will not make the assumption. What do you think, but you're saying it's bigger, right? People to take exactly. From it. And, well, I watched the press could, conference. Let me just give me one Go second. On. Um, he, my friend, um, he <laughs> could make the. Uh, he, All right, Poirot. He can actually make the argument, can't he? he? Says I'm not saying I'm not being racist. I'm saying I want to go back yeah. to a particular time or place. But this is coming from a man who is a senior figure within the Tory Party, the party that's been in power for 14 years, during which time we've seen austerity measures. We've seen the he, collapse of the police. He didn't, seen... so, he didn't seem very happy with how the, go the government was being was yet, running well, the country. Why were you a deputy party chairman? My problem with Lee Anderson, exactly. apart from the voters need to do it, I'm with her. I d it's not right. It's, I don't well, think let me he... answer that as well. He but voted... do you think that there is a rise in anti-Muslim, <clears throat> Islamophobic... We, we know that there is a rise in it, but with figures like him getting the limelight, as mm. we are giving him this morning, do you think that there is going to be a further increase in anti-Muslim rhetoric? Well, it enables and it empowers, right? Mm. I mean, we've already had George Galloway elected yep. to the House of Commons. Now, who have we got? We've got Lee Anderson as a Reform Party MP. This is worrying stuff. And it, it, where has our country gone, by the way? We're all still chatting happily away in our country. How can he, you Lee, say it and not him, then? Well, Lee Anderson... Well, say what? Where's our he country? Was no, no, I was, about I, I, I was no, being ironic. No, I was being ironic. I was saying, we've, oh. uh, we've still got our country. Lee Anderson should have come with me to Twickenham on Saturday to watch England beat Ireland in rugby. We were absolutely bouncing. There is still a strong sense of Englishness but, and but, Britishness. But with, with respect, listen, Richard Tice was there with several people from here, but here, here's the thing, right? I understand if you get thrown out of a party for Islamophobia comments, then people will think that everything you say... I'm interested he in your question. He got thrown out for not what, what? Yeah, absolutely. What, what does he mean? You're saying, Pete, he means to what? Go back to the old days, go back to... Because if you look at... No, he's, he's talking specifically. He... he... 
claims, and he believes this conspiracy theory that Islamist extremists are not only in control of Sadiq Khan, but in control of other institutions in the UK. He's a conspiracy theorist. There are, I guess, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure he would deny that, uh, Nick, and he would say that... Um, he said about yeah. the Sadiq Khan. He's, he's, I'm not saying... He's Listen, saying... he made false comments about Sadiq Khan. And, you know, he is, Sadiq Khan is not controlled by Islamists. Sadiq Khan is, has got 24-hour police protection from armed police officers because of threats from Islamists. And we need to be Precisely. really clear about that. It was a false statement. He's got I... from Islamists to threatening Sadiq Khan. Yes, yes. Right. That, that okay. is, that... So, but, uh, just to be really clear, because I don't want to, you know be accused of libeling anybody. Um, but he has not... He's refused to apologise for the comment he made about Sadiq Khan. All, That's right. all yes. he has said is that he used clumsy language. Yeah. But he wrote a whole piece in the Daily Express telling us why his comments were not Islamophobic yeah, exactly. and not racist. We can have our own views on this, but we now live in a society where someone who was Home Secretary until just the other month, Suella Braverman, is saying very similar things, saying that the Islamists are in charge now, that the anti-Semites are in charge. The rhetoric has been ramped up and ramped up. Is it any surprise that we've seen rises in Islamophobia as well as rises in so anti-Semitism? I'm, I'm not defending Lee Anderson. I'm not defending what no, he course, said. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't defend it because it's false and I believe it's racist. The other point that is related to that is that a lot of people do feel that the country is out of control. They yeah. do feel when they watch the Palestine Solidarity campaigns uh, protests, mm -hmm. for example, that there are uh, clearly anti-Semites, there are clearly people there who are saying racist things, who are supporting Hamas, for example, and they feel that their country is out of control. And maybe what Lee Anderson says, I want my country back, that can mean a lot of different things but, to but a lot exactly, of people. That's I think, what I, I mean, is we, he's using I, this catch-all term. And for me, that can mean one thing. For you, it can mean yeah. another. Um, is that lazy politics? Or well, is it clever? Or it could be very smart politics. I yeah. mean, the thing, the thing with Lee Anderson is he connects with people. There is no doubt about that. He is a politician who people recognise, who people know about, who people, uh, as I say, connect with. They, they see him saying something that no other MP but is, is there, saying. But, Pete, is there, is there substance? I watched that press conference yesterday, which was as interesting, and, and, and I was come away from it and <laughs> said this to Nick this morning, you're going to laugh at me. They're not very intelligent, most of our MPs, are they? I mean, he, did, he, he sort of had that press conference. Is it, is it just one-line sound bites? Hear me out, because we're going to sit here and several people will think, is he being Islamophobic? Other people will think, is he talking about the fact that there's crime and there's, there's knife crime and gun crime, the police don't seem to be anywhere on our streets, there's people coming to our country, there's people taking the mickey and sitting on the dole and not working, there's all sorts of stuff. Does he mean that? Because he's a soundbite king, there's no substance and nobody knows. They're going to speculate, aren't they? I'm amazed, by the way, that he's gone to reform. And I absolutely maintain, I don't care what anybody says, he should call a by-election. I think it is fundamentally wrong, as much as I think that it's wrong that... Well, he, he, he said, two. I mean, Lee Anderson si um, signed a petition or, or voted for a motion to say that by-elections... So how happen. the hell do you take the well, man well, seriously? Well, he, his point is that a general election can be called at any minute. If Rishi Sunak calls a general election in the next 10 days, I don't think he's going to do that, but then we'll have an election in May. But the point with Lee Anderson is that... You know, I don't know how intelligent he is. I haven't done an IQ test, whatever. The point is that he connects Resonates. with people. He says that he think resonates. He's stupid, yeah. I don't think he's stupid. He's sort of a sort of rough cut, as it were, but he's not stupid. Just on this point about the, the, our streets, Peter, what you were talking about, these, uh, these protests. I'm a Londoner, born and bred. I live in London. I go about my business in London. I don't have a sense that our capital city is being taken over. And I'll just point you to one example. There was a march on, say, the 17th of February. There were 30,000 demonstrators. I wouldn't actually touch those demonstrations myself with the barge girl because I know there will be some anti-Semites on there. There were only 12 arrests mm. out of 30,000 people. Now, some Many people, people might, say there should so, be a lot more. Well, some well, people exactly. say that the police we aren't doing their job, but we can talk more. about Can I just jump in two I, things? Oh, okay. I know, I don't know, but there's two things. One is, what is a barge pole? And secondly, <laughs> have you noticed what he said? He had Lee Anderson on his podcast, 20 questions. No, no, we... Richard twice. You guys Richard should be invited. Well, I was going to say, we haven't been invited, have we? <laughs> well, thank you so much to Peter Carter and Matthew Sutherland.